Okay, so let's look at the ladder problem. We have a five meter ladder up at 52 degrees. So actually, if you, if you work it out, this is a three, four, five right triangle. So this could be four meters high, three meters from the wall. We put in all our forces. We have the normal force here, and we have a normal force of the wall. We have gravity pulling down on the center of mass. We also have gravity pulling down on the person as they walk up the ladder. And we have a frictional force holding the ladder in place. We look at forces in the y direction. We have a force of gravity pulling down on the ladder and the person. We add those together, we get 800 newtons. But we're in equilibrium in the y direction. So this force pulling down must be equal to the only other force pushing up. And so we know this normal force is 800 newtons. Multiplying by the coefficient of friction, that gives us a frictional force of 400 newtons. Now that's not the frictional force we have, that's the maximum we can hope to get. And so if we look at the x direction, we're also, we want to be in equilibrium. There are only two forces in the x direction. So if this is the maximum frictional force we can get before we slip, that's also equal to the maximum normal force that this wall can be pushing. So now we look at the torques. Gravity pulling on me provides a torque into the board, but this doesn't accelerate into the board because there's an equal and opposite torque provided by this force. And the key is as I walk up the ladder, the torque I provide on the ladder increases, and that increases this normal force. Because this normal force will be whatever it needs to be so the ladder doesn't accelerate through the wall. And as this gets bigger and bigger, it ultimately becomes greater than 400 newtons pushing the ladder that way. And the frictional force is overcome and the ladder slides out and you fall. And so we can find these torques. The torque due to the mass of the ladder at the center of mass is the cross product of the radius and the force of gravity. And we can make that equal to the perpendicular component of the force of gravity if we want, times the radius. But I find it easier just to make it equal to the force of gravity times the perpendicular component of the radius, which is 1.5 meters. So we have 450 newton meters of torque trying to turn the ladder this way. But the wall provides a huge amount of torque in the other direction if we need it because its maximum force is 400 newtons and acting at a distance of 4 meters. Why 4 meters? Ah, because its radius cross force or the perpendicular component of the radius. Because this force is horizontal, we're looking at the vertical component of this radius, which would be this height, which is the same as this height. So before we fall, this wall is going to be able to provide us with 1,600 newton meters of torque in this direction. And we subtract those two, and we find that the wall is going to be able to provide an extra 1,150 newton meters of torque before we slip out. And so as we walk from the bottom up, all of a sudden, we now have a torque, which is a force of gravity on us times a perpendicular component of our radius. And we want to know when is that force times a perpendicular component of radius, when is it equal to that extra 1150 newton meters? And we find that it's when we're at 2.3 meters of distance, which is right about here. So I'd be standing right here when the torque I provided was enough so that this force was big enough to overcome this frictional force and the ladder slides and I fall. That's a long way to fall.